We've just had a brand new trailer for the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLCs and we're going to cover all of the details in today's video. So kicking off the Nintendo Direct, we got some new footage and new information on the hidden treasures of Area Zero, the brand new DLCs that are coming later this year to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And as of yet, we still have no confirmation on release date for either of these DLC packs. We have had a bunch of new information that we can go over today that's going to help us understand a little bit more about what to expect going into these new DLCs. So all of the information is collated over on the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet website and we can start off by taking a look at Masui Town, your base of operations during your school trip. So this is referring directly to the Teal Mask. In part one, the Teal Mask players will head to Masui Town in the land of Kitakami, which will act as their base of operations for the duration of the school trip. The community center in the middle of Masui Town is a public gathering place where the locals can get together and chat. There's also a shop nearby with toys and magazines on display. And just outside the town, you'll be treated to a view of the picturesque fields and rice paddies. There's a park a short walk from the town called Loyalty Plaza where you can see statues of Okadogi, Munkadori and Fezendipity, a trio that the villagers fondly call the Loyal Three. To the east of the village you will find Kitakami Hall. This is the venue where the villagers will hold festival masks, a tradition that has been passed down for generations. A variety of stalls appear during this festival selling everything from candy apples to yakisoba. Children and adults alike can enjoy themselves at this event. So we've seen a bunch of footage in the DLCs and the original trailer for the teal mask about the Kitakami town, about the loyal three and the information goes a little bit further in the new DLC trailer. So we've got some pictures here. I'm assuming this is Masui Town where we'll, our base will be. So it doesn't seem like it's a big village at all, but there seems to be from the description a bunch of things nearby. You've got the plaza and then you've got some shops as well where I'm assuming you can uh, buy items that are going to help you uh, train your Pokemon and do other things. Maybe some new items that will be appearing in these games. It'd be good to hear what you think we'll be getting, but it seems like quite a small town that extends on to Kitakami where we'll be going to kind of delve into the story a little bit more with the mountains and things like that. Then you've got Sentrent, which was uh, revealed as well as a bunch of other Pokemon that have been confirmed that will be appearing in the DLCs as well as Yanma, Yanmega, and then Jotonian Wooper as well, which is nice. Uh, also with Vulpex, and these look like to be the new stalls or stores that we're going to be getting in the DLC game. So this is probably likely where we're going to be able to buy things like I've mentioned, maybe even things like proteins, bottle caps, and maybe some new items that we might see in these games. There's the Loyal 3 statues that we see and also Snorlax confirmed in these games, which is really nice to see. Snorlax is one of my favorites. Uh, so to see it confirmed at the festival is really awesome. Uh, it goes on to talk about the terrarium and undersea facility that sustains artificial biomes. So this is more in regards to the Blueberry Academy and the Indigo Disc, which is part two of the DLC packs. The Blueberry Academy, where you go to study abroad in part two, the Indigo Disc, is home to a facility called the terrarium which maintains a variety of ecosystems that provide a livable environment for Pokemon. This world-renowned park beneath the sea was constructed to bolster the learning environment for strong trainers. The terrarium is made up of four areas, each of which features a unique climate and ecosystem. The artificial sky projected into the ceiling and walls changes to reflect the time of day and weather. The temperature of each area is also carefully regulated and you will find completely different Pokemon in each area. And then you can see the four different areas here of the terrarium, which is pretty cool. It reminds me of like a safari zone uh, that we've had in other games where you're going to be able to go in there and catch different Pokemon uh, in these areas. And I'm guessing as well because the weather and there is a day night cycle kind of simulated in this area that you're going to be able to get different Pokemon depending on the weather, depending on the, the day or the night cycle that we're in at the time so it's a pretty cool uh, ecosystem and I'm assuming maybe we might even get terror raids in this area as well which may link up to the story but we'll have to wait and see for that but very cool that we've got these four different areas within the Blueberry Academy and you can see some more pictures here of the inside of the ecosystem, the terrarium. So you've got uh, Alolan Executor in here, Seal and Dugon as well, and that's in the, the water area. Gorluk in the mountainous area, and then you've got Blitzel and Zibstriker in the kind of the grassland area, which I'm assuming 
is this area here. So this is the desert, the mountain, the, the water and the ice, and then you've got the kind of uh, field plain and area over here. So that's all the information about the two areas. We do have a little bit more information about Okadoji, the Monkadori and Pheasantipity. They have a new ability called Toxic Chain. Uh, introducing the new ability that Okadori, Monkadori and Pheasantipity have in the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero Part 1, the Teal Mask. Toxic Chain, the ability. Toxic Chain is a new ability being introduced in the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. When one of these three Pokemon hits an opponent with a move, the power of the Toxic Chain all three Pokemon have may cause the opponent to become badly poisoned. So it's like Toxic. Uh, whereas, you know, normally the abilities like Poison Touch and things like that, they just poison the foe, but Toxic Chain is going to actually cause toxic uh, status to the opponent. And there'll be a, probably a, a percentage chance that that happens every time you use an attack on an opponent, but it's a pretty strong ability, to be honest, because you're starting the, the Toxic Counter as soon as that does take effect, and it'll be doubling damage every time you go on and on in the battle. And it goes on to talk about the Pokemon that will appear will differ depending on the version of the game you have so they're going to have version exclusives again going into the dlcs depending on which base version you've got so if you're buying the dlc pack for scarlet you're going to have a, a different group of pokemon to those that you that are playing violet uh, with your dlc packs as you can see here um, some species of Pokemon that appear in the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero will differ depending on which game the DLC is for. For example, Gligar will appear in the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero for Pokemon Scarlet, so I'm very happy about that because one of my favorite Pokemon, well, Ambipom, which is another favorite Pokemon of mine, will appear in the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero for Pokemon Violet. So it'll be interesting to see as we get further down the line, closer to the release of these DLCs, what the other version exclusives are for Scarlet and Violet for the DLC packs. Finally, we got to meet some new characters in the DLCs as well. Introducing some new characters you will meet at the Blueberry Academy. You meet plenty of new people while studying abroad at the Blueberry Academy. Among them are Kairano, I'm hoping I'm probably not pronouncing that right, the director of the Academy and Lacey, a student there. Uh, he acts as the director of the Blueberry Academy, which he founded having heard rumors about you and your adventures he visits Paldea to invite you to his institution as an exchange student it seems that he is a long time acquaintance of director Clavel so does he look like he's a villainous character probably not um, it's kind of interesting here we'll get onto it in a minute that he's got that kind of horn edge um, motif on his scarf which kind of relates to horn edge in a different way so that might be a hint at something we'll get into that in a moment and then you got Lacey second year student at the Blueberry Academy she's a reliable person who shows you around the Academy when you first arrive her Pokemon battling skills are apparently nothing to scoff at so a little bit like a penny sort of character I feel um, and yeah they're the only two and that's all the information that we've got here of course from these little bits of information. We've already covered on the channel the new Terror Raid event for uh, Chess Form Gimme Ghoul and also the mystery gifts that will be happening as well. So if we just take a look, a closer look at the trailers here, uh, we can see that we do start with this mountain area here, which is presumably in Masui Town because this is starting off the Teal Mask. This kind of looks a little bit like Area Zero or a replica Area Zero, but with a big, kind of monster looking mouth to it and eyes as well. It might even be a call to Ogapon, which is the legendary that is kind of the big motif Pokemon legendary in the teal mask, but it has a mask on, so we don't know what it actually looks like yet. I don't know, I might be off the mark here, but that is the first thing that you look at. And we also get another call out to some masks here as well. So we've got the masks that we've seen in the initial DLC trailer as well. So there's those, the new Pokemon Center, areas here there isn't really too much other than the chimeco call out there i don't know if there's any kind of other hints you've got pokeballs here the vendor so we're going to be able to buy pokeballs um potentially from this area polka dolls that looks like i don't know if that is polka dolls and then they're obviously like game boys but i don't suppose we're going to be buying any game boys to use in the game there's definitely vitamins here you can see the vitamins so this is something that we're going to be able to buy from this place i can't see anything kind of indicating of bottle caps here but you would imagine that might be an item that we can buy as well as some other things from this store obviously volpex has been confirmed so we're going to be getting that and the alolan volpex accessible in these games 
We've got Oricorio, uh, Ambipom as well, which is there, but you can see in the background to the Ambipom, there is a cave there. So we're gonna be able to go inside cave systems. We're gonna have new cave systems in these games. And this looks like a schoolyard almost area, but this must be where we kind of first arrive in Masui Town. And this is Carmen and her brother Kieran, who we do and we have already met, but they are the, the trainers that kind of help us around Ki Kitakami. So looks like we battle with them to kind of begin with in the games. And then we get a, a further look at the, some field lands in this area. And we can have a look here. Is anything really other than the Yanmegas? Nothing to kind of spot here. Um, and then we've got more shots of us. There's a new uniform that we get, I'm guessing when we are about to go to the festival that we can wear. Interestingly here, you've got Ogapon's mask that Kieran's wearing. You've got some more shots of the festival as well. Obviously the Pika mask, and then more masks in the background here, but find out a bit more about the Loyal Three. We've got the three of them there. We've got their new abilities now as well and how they relate or what the villagers call them in Kika. Kitakami so they're quite a presence to the village and then we go back to the mountain so this is the big thing for me here where we go back to this mountain that we first saw when we went to Masui um, with that big face and this is indicating that we're going into the mountain or we're the mountain is related to Ogopon which is what we're going to see now we haven't got there's a big crystal there we haven't got its typing yet but you can see that looks like they're almost terra crystals on the mask which is Maybe a hint of what the masks have. They have some sort of power, maybe the actual masks when Pokemon are wearing them rather than terrestrializing. They use these masks as a different form, but you can kind of see the ears here of the actual Pokemon behind the mask. Um, but we can't really get too much of a look at it otherwise here, but it looks like it is going to be a grass type for sure. And it'll be interesting to see what its face does look like when the mask is there. But that's everything that we get for the teal mask and then we come to the blueberry academy of course i honestly thought we were just getting this area but as you can see this must be the terrarium underneath that goes way deep under the water here uh we're gonna get introduced to Carano. we get a little insight to the battlefield here and this is another shot that we had from that first dlc where we had this picture of this map of different terrains different areas where pokemon appear the weather as well and we kind of working out where it was did it refer to Paldea? but it obviously refers to the terrarium which we know a little bit more information about now so this must be the weather in the terrarium here uh, there's a sandstorm going on here geodude as well is another pokemon that will appear in this area and then you can see that uh, we get introduced to the, the terrarium here which is pretty cool uh, so you've got vending machines this might be a little bit like in sword and shield where we get vitamins we can buy vitamins maybe in the terrarium from these for a cheaper cost but you can see how vast it is it looks absolutely huge not far off it looks like a massive area in here where we're going to be able to kind of explore and, and find lots of different things this in the middle must be an information point it might tell you about what pokemon are appearing here at certain times of the day and then you've got all of these different like crystal block structures around the area as well which i don't know whether they're similar structures to this one or whether they're their own independent structures with like maybe housing or something else in them where you can use them um but you can see they're not like terra crystals which is kind of interesting they're more block like uh, we do see some battles here metagross confirmed renewlicless confirmed as well Milotic is we get a couple more characters that haven't actually been introduced to us in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet uh, information on the website. We've got this character here, which was on the original poster advertising the DLCs, at least the Teal Mask. So I'm assuming that she's gonna be one of the tutors or an Elite Four sort of member. Look at that little Wingle just sitting up there as well. Then we've got this character here. Definitely feels like some sort of gym leader. Could be the chef at the, the Blueberry Academy. There's him and then we have this character here who looks a little bit sinister more like a, i don't know a dark type trainer they are the three that we get so that is the blueberry academy big rainbow above the academy which kind of is a big call to me at least to terrapagos which then it goes into so there is some huge link with this to terrapagos and interestingly you can see the type symbols on its back form when it's kind of waking up here so if you we can come back to this again we'll start off with its tail the type symbols kind of merge and Terrapagos is kind of like, it feels like it's come to life almost. And it looks like it's in some sort of water area. So is it being kind of held hostage 
at the minute. Who knows? But it doesn't look like it's in an open area. It looks like it's in a cavern. And that's all we get. That's all we get. And like I said before, we don't get any release dates at the moment, which is the big kicker, I think, from today. Like, I was expecting at least a date for the Teal Mask. Planned release date, fall 2023. Again, planned release date, winter 2023. So both this year, um, although the DLC pack, if you buy it online, does say 2024. So it may be into next year but we'll have to wait and see and that is everything that we got from today's trailer and one last thing i'm going to mention that was missed in the trailer today is the fact that we have these two images here this one image is from the indigo disc trailer and there's these four objects here this is passed over to me by light really good leak analyst and theory analyst as well uh, we had them on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago but you can see here these three objects that are around these trainers when they are battling. Then we can also take a closer look at them here as well. And it's really hard to kind of identify them, but Light suggesting that these Pokemon are actually Horn Edge um, or at least a Paldean Horn Edge, like a regional form or something like that, which would be kind of interesting, especially because we do have this call to Horn Edge here on Kairano, which kind of indicates that you've got some sort of Horn Edge uh, link at least with his scarf because it is something that you see on Horn Edge. So if you pull Horn Edge up, there's exactly the same pattern here as you can see on this scarf. So it would indicate to me, it is a different color of course, this lighter blue is dark blue and the rest of the, the scarf is actually really dark, which would kind of link in with this, this color here. So this is the scarf that you're potentially seeing here and this could be a signature Pokemon of Karano, and it could be an indicating of a regional form of Horn Edge, which would be very, very exciting. But that is everything that we got today, of course. We've went through all of the details, we've went through the trailer, and we went through all the information that has been released on the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet website. It's very exciting. Like I say, it would be nice to get a date for the Teal Mask, but I am so excited about these games coming back, and it'll be great to get a bit more information as we get closer to the release. Hopefully, it's a around that September time, October time, it may be around then, but um, let's keep our fingers crossed for as early a date as possible. I would love to hear your opinions, your thoughts on everything that we learned from the DLC trailers today. And what are your theories on the regional variant of Horn Edge? Big shout out to Light once again for that. I would love to see something like that. A regional form Aegislash in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet would be very exciting. So thank you so much for tuning in friends. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourself and bye-bye.